Peter Rose along with Currency Trading. It's a beautiful uh, late May day, as you can see, 2022, from behind my shoulder. I should actually be looking out that way and enjoying the day. Actually, I just got back from a long drive up to uh, Moulton Borough, New Hampshire, up along the uh, eastern side of Lake Winnipesaukee. It's just beautiful up there. Um, Moulton Borough, Tufton Borough, that whole area, and uh, up in the mountains on the, in the, le in the uh, lakes region. Very, very beautiful. And came back to uh, see what my current trade was doing as we move into Memorial Day weekend. And because of the weekend, it's still just fluttering around. It's been fluttering around for a few days. And so I'm trading. Doing nothing is trading. Even if you don't have a trade on, doing nothing is trading. In my last video, I talked a little bit about this, but I wanted to, it's such an important concept or topic that I wanted to kind of tie into the last video. Um, you know, if you have the discipline, I could show you how to make $150 a day on average three days a week. Or I could show you how to make um, $3,000 a month. Now, um, which would you take? Well, you know that the $150 on a daily basis is, is, is a uh, day trading process. And looking at $3,000 a month or a month and a half is much more, um, well, it's not long-term position trading, but it could be. Um, you could go a couple of weeks to do that. Uh, you could go several months to do that, depending on the size of your account. I'm talking about the same size account. But obviously, in looking for the 3,000, you're looking to put one trade on and then make that work and carry you through so that you make uh, uh, $3,000. Well, if you're trading one full lot, obviously you're going to need <laughs> you're going to need 300 pips to do that. So probably talking about a $30,000 account to be safe um, that you'd need in order to do that. But to make 150 bucks a day, you're going to need a $30,000 account. So the question is, in your psychological makeup, how willing are you, you are, how willing are you to accept a relatively small weekly gain, um, 450, I guess, uh, 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 a week. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people that don't make $450 a week, but, you know, when you're dealing with a $30,000 account you, in, in currencies where you have that capability, I mean, all I'm talking about is making five pips a day on a $30,000 account, a half a percent on your on your, on your your risks. I'm just, come on, how, how tough is it to make five pips? Well, it can be real tough if you um, don't understand your um, opening analysis process and have a good way of evaluating when you have a take, take profit point. I mean, all this stuff is based on your experience, right? So if you are an experienced trader and you're not having the results that you should have, you should be paying attention to what I'm saying because it could be that you're swinging for the fence and you're trying for that $3,000 single trade that's going to carry you through so you don't have to do any work. You can check the charts uh, once every day. If you're trading on a daily, a daily candle, a daily candle might have 80 to 100 pips ATR, but you may be getting 20 pips a day increase or something like that. And so you need to carry that out for, or $30. You may, you may need to carry that out for, I don't know, a couple of months or something in order to get that $3,000 off that same $30,000 account. I guess the, the difference is in waiting for that long-term profit target, you could say, well, I'm not trading. I'm looking for that really good entry point, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to sit with it and maximize the, the risk that I'm taking 
to four are the risk. I mean, that gets into this risk reward ratio gooberish that I, I don't subscribe to at all. Um, but the concept is to have a trade that's viable and to let that trade run to get as much as you can out of it. As a day trader, I'm all for that as well. Many of my trades go to carry trades after they initially are profitable and I reset my stop. But because I only trade one currency pair, the fact that I'm letting that one, one pair fluctuate uh, on a carry trade, even overnight, could see me lose that potential. Now I have made some money because maybe I pulled some off or maybe I just pulled the stop up and, and, and got to break even and we're just going to let it go. Um, but to have that come back and, and, and stop out either to break even or with uh, whatever small gain that you locked in initially by staging out um, a, a lot or two still doesn't pay you for the risk that you initially took to have that initial gain go through and then the price come down and, and get stopped out. Or maybe you don't take that gain and you just let that run and um, you trail the stop and and it gets gets hit. And so the initial risk that you take um, for the gain that you make divided by the number of days that you hold that trade, there's a ratio there. Um, of, well, what could you have done on a daily basis in order to do that without that risk? Is there risk on the on the daily trade? Well, sure there is. Now, you could get into scalping and try to make 150 bucks that day um, with a smaller account. But with a smaller account, you would reduce your profit target, right? I mean, I'm looking for five pips on a $30,000 account to make, which is a half a percent, to make the 150 bucks a day. If I'm trading with one full lot, then, uh, you know, 1% of, uh, of 10,000 is 100 bucks and the half of that's 50 bucks. And so with a full lot, the goal would be to make um, 50 bucks a day. And 50 bucks a day is as easy to make as if you had a hundred thousand dollar account, you'd make five hundred dollars a day. I mean, that's how you scale up your winnings is by scaling up your bank, not by scaling up the number of pips you get or by doing fancy shit in between, because that all brings risk into play. I'm in a trade right now where obviously it's gone underwater and then it came in my favor and it's gone. And I never got to my next uh, stage point. It just went way out. I always know what ultimately is going to happen. I don't know when that's going to happen. And because of the volatility, I think that the end result will be a violent reaction and I will hit my target. And on the way to coming back down from where it was to hitting my target, I've readjusted the levels at which I'm staging in and have therefore increased my profit target or my profit dollar value by um, five times, so 500% increase in, in the dollar value of the, of the, um, of the risk, about nah, maybe four times. Um, so I'm looking at uh, originally a short-term trade that went so very well in my favor that uh, I thought, I, uh, I'm right, I'm very right, this is going to have some retractions, I will just let this thing run against me or run in my favor, and I will stage in as it comes to me. And so I went from doing nothing that particular day to looking and evaluating the uh, price action and the situation that I was in, and I had made oh, I don't know, $1,900 or $1,800 or something like that the previous couple of days or previous few trades that I had made. 
And so to go in the negative by two or three thousand dollars is I average out because I have a good wind to loss ratio. I can do that. Don't try this at home without adult supervision. If you don't have a good wind to loss ratio, you can't do this. But basically, I sat there doing nothing until I recognized that there was a potential. I made my order. I sat there. It started to behave in a manner that I thought exceeded what I would expect for this daily win of, uh, I went in with three lots, okay? So I was three, four, five hundred dollars up on the trade, and I thought, well, this is pretty cool. Um, instead of going for that half a percent return, why don't I just let this thing float? And we'll see what happens. So I readjusted my um, well, I wasn't going to stage because it was a it was a day trade. I was just going to clip it for a few hundred dollars and call it a day. But after taking the trade, the environment changed, and so therefore I opted to let that trade run and do a carry, and I've carried it for several days now, and I'm doing nothing. I'm not trading other currency pairs. I'm not trading gold. I'm not trading oil. I'm not even looking at that stuff. I come in and I look at what I'm currently, what my current position is doing, and I have only one or two decisions to make. Is it time to get out and cut with the loss, or is it time to change my stage in points because after I decided to go to carry trade, I establish some staging points so that as the trade turned around and went in my favor, I would add to that position. How heavy will I load into this trade? It all depends on how price action is working as it goes through the new stops that I've set to determine whether I'm going to stage in more lots or whether I'm simply going to set with that bring my stop down, protect most of that gain, and just see if it, if, it, if it goes. Now, if I protect my gain um, with it going far fewer pips below my average price, the dollar value of that gain goes from that original $150 to five dollars or $600. So I'm going to be okay in that respect. Of course, if price never comes back and it keeps going and going and going and going against me, then I've got that other decision I need to make. Well, where do I want to cut it and say, nah, I give up. Um, I tend not to want to uh, get out of a bad trade because when I am as long-term view as I can take in these trades and say, um, sure, I could get out of this. I could take a couple of three or four thousand dollar loss, and I could make that up when the thing flips around. I could just go in and catch it as it as it as it retraces back to where I thought it would should go, or I could just hold on to it and not lose the three or four thousand. I have to make that back, which is going to ultimately take off of my profit. There's some twisted logic there. <clears throat> that requires someone to either lose their account several times in order to learn what not to do and, or to take um, instruction from somebody who's been through that and to pay attention to what they're saying um, before you try to extract yourself from these kinds of situations on, <laughs> on your own by trying to figure it out yourself. It isn't that difficult to figure out, but you're, what's happening in this instance I'm talking about, is that you're combining the initial short-term day trade uh, analysis and then having the clarity of mind to look at the bigger picture. I mean, you look at the bigger picture to determine your, your, your entry anyway, right? Because you're doing multiple time frame analysis. Well, after you take that trade and it's moving, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna sit there and take your, your, your profit you, you're just gonna you, you're just gonna do that. You obviously have to 
analyze that trade again. Once the trade is taken, you have to redo your entry analysis before you go into the position management phase of that trade because you have decisions to make after that trade is taken. When do I move my stop? Am I going to stage? Am I going to uh, increase the risk that I have, stage backwards and then stage forwards and change my, my stop or my profit target? What, what, what am I going to do? So you're not out of the entry analysis stage just because you take the entry. You, you, you have to understand these stages are broken down into, into pieces that all fit together to form that stage and the stages fit together to form the life cycle of the currency trade itself. And so a lot of the stuff that I talk about on the videos, thank you by the way for those of you who subscribe to the channel and for, for many of you who, who do leave comments. Uh, those have all been very helpful. There haven't been the assholes out there leaving stupid shit uh, and, and, and faking like they're me and they're, uh, you know, responding to your comments and all that other kind of stuff. Because at that point, I'll just shut the comments off uh, because I'm not going to tolerate that kind of foolishness. And I don't think you deserve to be subjected to that kind of thing anyway. But I appreciate the comments that are being left now. And also for those of you that <coughs> take the time out to email me and say, hey, you were talking about this and that and the other thing. Can you get in a little bit more detail or can you point me to something that, that would <coughs> help me better understand that? I can do that minimally and I'm certainly willing to do that. And those folks that email me, most of them, we fall into conversation and we continue the conversation going, do I have courses to sell and, and consulting to do? Sure I do, but it's really expensive and so nobody's going to want to do that. And I understand that. That's fine. So I'll try to help you the best that I can. But it'll get to a certain point where I'll say, okay, look, in order for me to help you more, we'd have to go in and, and do um, some courses or consulting or something like that. I can continue to, to, to show you little pieces, but you're at the point now where I can't really show you how it all goes together. You have to figure that out for yourself. Um, now, whether you're going to be able to do that or not, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you can and, and, and maybe you can't. I was able to do that. You should be able to do that as well. But the long and the short of all this is that primary to all of this discussion is that you have to be willing to sit there and do nothing and feel good about yourself that you are trading and still consider yourself a trader because you're thinking about it. The markets are there, whether you're in a trade or you're simply on the sidelines waiting until the next trade opportunity comes. Because when that next trade opportunity comes, there's a flurry of decisions that you have to go through or analysis that you have to go through in order to make a decision as to what you're going to do. And you need to do that and be able to do that very quickly. And once the trade is on, there's another series of analysis that you need to do. And you need to do that even more quickly because price could very well at that point turn around and go dramatically against you and you have to say, was I wrong about the trade or am I right? And I just have to withstand whatever loss these guys are throwing at me so that I can reap the benefit of what I know the trade should be able to do. But again, that takes a lot of experience. And you have to understand that all of that price action is based on order flow. If the order flow is consistent, then your analysis will lead you to a, 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 a trade entry that will provide consistent price in that direction for enough time for you to get some value out of the trade. Uh, if you don't have good entry analysis, then you're, how are you going to determine whether the trade has the potential to go far enough to make it worth your while to take the risk in the first place? You know, it's not like, um, um, you know, I'm going to look at a map and I see Oh, I, I, there's a river there, and so I'm, I know there's a river, and rivers are pretty deep because this is a pretty wide river. I'm just going to run to the edge of the river, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. You don't know where the rocks are. You haven't studied it enough. And do you know that rocks will hurt you if, <laughs> if you jump in and the water's too shallow? And do you know that if the water is deep and there's rocks under there, that those rocks won't hurt you? Because no matter how hard you jump into that water, it's deep enough that you'll never hit those rocks. That's the kind of analysis that you have to do 
when you're going into the, those trades and after the trade is gone through, you're not actually doing anything except you're in the back of your head, you're constantly doing analysis as to what, what you should do. Even if you say, oh, I'm gonna set a trailing stop and my profit target is up here. You're not done. If you think you're gonna be able to do that and get maximum value for the risk that you're taking, if that's what, if that's what you're thinking is gonna happen by what, a set and forget, oh, we're trading off the daily chart so you only have to check your, check your charts at five o'clock and make your decision as to what you wanna do. Really? Really? You gotta have a lot of experience to do that, boys and girls. I'm just telling you that you do. I've been studying the currency markets and the price action on that and have written simulation software on that that duplicates price action to the T and I'm here to tell you that you're delusional if you think that, 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 that that's a, a viable way to do it without the experience of actually knowing and feeling comfortable with what that price is going to do over the periods of times that you're going to be there either watching it to go into entry or um, managing that trade. You don't just check your positions at the end of the day and say, oh, I can adjust my profit target and I'll bring my stop as a trail stop and I don't have anything to worry about. Well, yeah, you do. Yeah, you really do. Because that trailing stop may very well take you out because you were greedy and trying to get your profit too far and boom, and it whacks you out. Did you get paid? Yes, you got paid. But you didn't get paid for the overall trade profit target that you projected. And so you have to step back and stop patting yourself on the back. Oh, I just made $3,000. Well, you could have made eight or $300. Or you could have made eight hundred dollars But you're tickled to death that you made 300 But that 300 doesn't represent the risk that you took or the plan that you had. If you're a swimmer and you're going into a swimming race, you've got the you've got the goal to, to tag off the ends of the of the of the pool x number of times so that you can win that win that race. Is is it to tag the tag the pool um you know, four times? No, tagging the pool four times isn't it. You, you've, you've, you've trained your whole life to win the race. Why would you go and tag the ends of the pool four times and say, oh, I'm tired and I, I you know, I've made it four lengths, uh, four, four times, eight times the, the length of the pool and I did, did really good. I'll qualify for eighth or something in the race. Is that, is that really a, a building a career as a, a competitive swimmer? Don't be... This isn't a competition in the currency markets, but it is a measure of your ability to judge what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. And if you're constantly pulling your money off the table when there's more money to be had without taking additional risk, why would you pull your money off the table? Why would you let that the caprice of the market um, to come down against some arbitrarily trailing stop. I'm going to trail to, from the bottom of the last candle. What if the bottom of the last candle is 70 pips away because it pin barred way up and you're sitting there with a, with a, with a uh, $3,000 gain and your stop, your trailing stop is at the bottom of that, of that candle. You're going to leave it there? If you're not actively managing that trade, every minute that you have that trade on, you shouldn't be managing the trade. That's not called managing the trade. If you have a baby and you bring that baby home at night and you put that baby up to bed, are you done? Okay, I don't have to worry about that baby. You've got a baby monitor in there and you go in every a couple hours to check and make sure the baby is okay, that the window isn't open, that it's not breeze, blowing breeze on there. That baby is constantly in your mind. And you're getting up at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning to feed them, whatever it is that you got to do. Why would you have? A, why would you think you it's any less for a currency trade? Do you think a doctor, a surgeon, forgets about the the person that he just operated on? No. There's. I, I want to see you in the morning. I'm going to come in. and I'm going to check on you. I'm going to come into you at mid midday. I'm going to check your vital signs. I've got the nurses working for me. We're checking you 
every three hours we're checking you. Why would it be any different for your currency trading? Look at the world around you and, and how things function. Doing nothing is not necessarily not doing nothing. It's you're not trading, but you may be thinking and you may be managing, but it's not necessary for you to trade. Peter Rose, Longway Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.